Okay, so Pi News episode 80. So first up is this story from everythinglubbock.com. Crew caught in Lubbock using Raspberry Pi device to steal from ATMs, court records say. And for some reason I can't access this site without a VPN, that's why I've had to save it as a PDF uh, on my iPad. Lubbock, Texas. Three men were arrested in Lubbock and accused of using an electronic device to steal from ATMs across the region according to court documents obtained by everythinglubbock.com. I won't name them, but they were arrested on August the 3rd at a hotel. Court documents stated authorities in Lubbock were made aware of a group committing thefts from ATMs in the West Texas region. The Texas Financial Crime Task Force told authorities the queue was able to steal large sums of US currency from ATMs. According to court records, the three used a device called a Raspberry Pi that is plugged into ATMs and deactivates its security systems so they could remove the cash drawer. I've got a download of the program in the description. Special note, the court records referred to the device as a Raspberry Pi, P-I-E. However, the proper spelling is Raspberry Pi. The article has been updated. Court documents stated the three suspects were seen stealing more than 5,700 from an ATM on 50th Street before they were arrested. Police found two Raspberry Pi devices in their hotel room, according to court records. So depending on when they bought those Raspberry Pis, they might not have made back enough money to pay for them. Obviously, they're a lot cheaper now. And on that subject, let's have a look at Pi Locator just to see how good the state is. I've definitely found a lot more sort of comments on my videos about people just getting a Raspberry Pi. Quite a few people have mentioned they've got Raspberry Pi 02Ws, which was so hard to get a hold of. And you can see here, it's looking really rosy. Everything's super green. And uh, yeah, loads of Pi 0Ws, load of Raspberry Pi 4s all over the place. So yeah, definitely much, much better now. Next up, Android 14 release date is getting closer. I had this as an email, so I did a video recently on Mterrier, which is more uh, a sort of commercial side of Android for Raspberry Pi. I liked it, it was a decent operating system, nice and stable, available through Raspberry Pi Imager, but uh, they're already saying Android 14 is coming pretty soon. So we get the AOSP version, which is Android Open Source Project. The unofficial code name is Android Upside Down Cake. And you can see there's a timeline here, various different dates. So Android 14 beta 5 on the 10th of August. And it looks like Android 14 could be released on the 5th of September. And there's various different things listed about what's changing. I'll put a link in the description if you want to read that. Next up, we had a really nice looking handheld from Hackaday. Blackberry Pi puts desktop Linux in your pocket. And you can see they've got a, a ZX Spectrum style, but a Blackberry keyboard. So that looks like a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero 02W. Got a little speaker on the back, looks like. Custom handheld combines a Raspberry Pi Zero, 320 by 240 LCD, and the BBQ20 keyboard, and a 2500 milliamp lithium pouch cell. Optionally, it also supports modules as the Raspberry Pi camera, a real-time clock, and a USB hub. But you can't have them all plugged in at once because it draws too much current. I like this one, uh, so a retro radio on Reddit. And you can see here, if we flick through the few pictures on this to show it, I like the analog dials. And we can see all the cabling and everything in the back of it. Plenty of room inside there, obviously. Looks like a Pi 3 or Pi 4, probably. So there's some details in the comments, but not a lot. But there is actually this, which is all the documentation. So there's a GitHub and the documents, and it's really nicely done. So all about the build, all the source code and everything is there. Pi World Radio. And we can see Raspberry Pi OS, hardware, heatsink, audio DAC hat, four inch speaker. So if you're interested in that sort of project, all the information you need is here. Tom's Hardware had this story. Raspberry Pi CyberKeep 2040 sports both Pico and Pi Zero. So you can see here, there's a little Pico here on a mechanical keyboard. No seg fault please has combined two Pi projects into one by using a Pico to power a custom keyboard and building a Pi Zero into the unit to work as a main computer, turning it into a Cyberdeck keyboard combo. And there's various pictures about the build. And there's a video on YouTube here. So you can see it's connected up to a normal monitor. So you have dual monitor support. And I'll include the link to the Reddit post in the video. You can see that it also plays Doom on the little screen while you're working on the big screen. I like the look of this one. Uh, so this is a keyboard, like a proper typewriter keyboard uh, with an LCD screen. 
but this was for the maker to create stories uh, about, there's a whole thing about storytelling in here, but one of the interesting things was that it was automatically saving to the cloud so that you could share it across multiple devices, but I just really like the look of it. Uh, it's, it's a really cool looking machine, loads of work's gone into it, and again, lots of pictures, lots of information, which I really like on these sorts of stories, and a cool font for the logo. Nice little handheld based on the Pico. Um, and this is all about the Mega Drive, really. And, uh, you know, the, it's pretty impressive that the Pico can do Mega Drive games well. Uh, it can't do a lot of the other systems. So, you know, if you're going to do a handheld, really a 0 to W and up would be better. But obviously this would mean that this costs a lot less. And uh, if all you want is Mega Drive, the Pico is going to be fine. And you can see how nicely it's integrated into this board. And some nice close-ups here as well of all the buttons. Yeah, really well put together. And here's a picture of the board on its own. Another handheld, uh, this time based on a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero Two. And this is by Experimental Pi. They sent me a Pi Boy XRS uh, a while ago, which has a Raspberry Pi 4 inside it. And works really well, really nice machine, really well put together. This is a cheaper offering uh, and using a Pi Zero or Zero Two W, which obviously means it's a lot cheaper to, to buy the whole setup, but uh, you can see on the back of it, there's a nice picture which shows the 02W in place. So all you have to do is pop your Pi Zero in there, which now we know is available from earlier on in the video, and you're up and running. And it's a nice size screen for the size of the device. Uh, what we're we looking at. So three and a half inch LCD, 640 by 480 resolution, six buttons. You've still got an HDMI out and an audio jack. Yeah, very nice. You can see the shoulder buttons on the back here as well. From RetroPie Official on Facebook. Hello everyone, given the wide consensus received, I've decided to publish the design files of my project. And uh, all the details are on here. A really nice drawing of it. If we click on the GitHub. So as you can see from the picture, it looks rather cool with loads of buttons and a couple of joysticks and speakers and so on all details about the woodworking. You can see inside all the buttons, how it's all wired up and everything. And the back of an LG monitor that's being used in there. And this is a, using a Compute Module 4 using a carrier board of his own design, which is pretty impressive. All the close-ups and everything here. If you're wondering why not use a normal Raspberry Pi, the answer is having purchased several Compute Module 4 modules for my Ocean CM4 project and given the near impossibility of finding Raspberry Pi, I found it logical to use what I had at home. Obviously it's reversed now because CM4s are really hard to get hold of, Raspberry Pi 4s are much, much easier. But a lovely project and if you're interested in doing something like that, it's very cool. I really like this one, uh, it's an old Sony CRT TV but the CRT monitor bit has been taken out and been replaced with a little LCD screen. My latest Pi TV running a Pi 4 with OSMC, which is some media center software. And I like the Star Trek image on there. Screen is an eight inch LCD from AliExpress. Original dials were replaced with some USB and HDMI ports. Speakers run off a USB deck. Yeah, it is a cool project and obviously there's loads of details in there. I'll put a link in the description. This is just a time lapse really, but it's really nice to see and there's links if you want to do this sort of thing yourself to the software. I like the way that it's got the weather and the time and all the information, everything on there. And uh, it's a lovely view. Back on Facebook, a couple of posts on this. Um, so this is a 3D printed case for a Raspberry Pi 4. Originally designed as a vertical mounting pocket bracket with a fan for mounting on the back of a TV. And if we scroll down, there's some pictures there, uh, but since then, it's actually been made. And so you can see inside with an aluminium cooler on the top and a fan, and the 3D printed files are on Colts 3D. And you can see in this image, it mentions SATA SSD and M.2 drive. This is not a Raspberry Pi, I just like the image, um, <laughs> especially as it was a pizza box that had clearly been used. So you can see here it's running Linux, looks like a, a deconstructed laptop with these couple of bits of string holding it in place. I'm sure it's not particularly stable, but it did make me laugh. And uh, a Pi in the wild to finish off. And this is, I guess, from Universal Studios, so not Universal 2. 
and you can see that it's running Raspberry Pi OS must have crashed or just booting up or something like that. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.